Hey, how's it going everyone? Hope you guys all had a good Halloween. It's practically the end of the year. We just got a few more months left and I have been using the LG V30 for some time now. I think this is the phone that's gonna get me into next year. So I do wanna give you guys my full review. Of course, there is other phones like the iPhone 10 coming out, which I did pre-order and I'll have that here for you guys on the third. So I'll post that on the channel very soon. Stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's check out the LG V30. So during the live stream event for the LG V30, I must admit I wasn't drooling over its design or its features because it didn't really bring anything new to the table in terms of design. Bezel-less phones are becoming the norm and glass panels are something we seem to be getting from most OEMs. It wasn't until I actually got my hands on the LG V30 that I realized it's something special. This silver model I'm rocking reminds me of the holographic Pokemon cards I used to collect. It actually is really beautiful. What's interesting is that there is Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the back, but the camera lens is covering Corning Gorilla Glass 4. It's pretty interesting and I can only assume LG has a good reason for that. Also located on the back is a traditional LG power key and the fingerprint reader which works about as fast as you've come to expect. We also have the much talked about cameras on the back next to the flash and the laser autofocus which we'll discuss shortly. LG continues to offer expandable storage and now the sparse headphone jack which is also very powerful. And of course we have the speaker grill at the bottom next to the USB-C port. It's unfortunate we don't get dual front facing speakers but at least the speaker gets kind of loud. All of this with an IP68 water and dust resistance. Now some of you guys might remember back in 2013 when LG launched the LG G Flex with its 6 inch POLED display. And well it's back. This time it's better but this isn't a direct sequel to that phone but it it's been a long time since LG used an OLED display. LG didn't give this display a crazy curve, but we are looking at a six inch full vision display with a resolution of 2880 by 1440. That supports HDR10 for a wider range of colors and is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. Simply put, it's an amazing display and I just wish I could dim the display a little bit at night because it tends to stay pretty bright. Plus you can even tweak the display to your liking, but what really strikes me the most is how easy it is to manage this phone with one hand given its display size. It's still a big display, but LG isn't making this as narrow as other manufacturers are doing with their phones, and I personally really like that. I can really tell the difference when I pick up my Note 8 or the iPhone 8. Not only is the V30 easier to handle, it's also lighter and extremely thin, so it just feels super comfortable. I have seen other reviews where people are saying that the Galaxy Note 8 display is better than the LG V30, and I agree that is true, but that doesn't mean that this display is bad, it just means that the Galaxy Note 8 has a slightly better screen, so this is really good. I do wish I could crop into YouTube videos to have them take over the entire display like on the Galaxy Note 8, but at least the display has really deep black so it really blends in with the bezels and I really like that LG went silver in the back and black in the front. Thumbs up. It's really hard to explain how comfortable this phone is to hold and how easy it is to use with one hand, so I recommend you try that out, but personally I think the design is, is good. It's great. Now where I do have some concerns is in the software. LG's never really been my first choice for software and LG doesn't really put my concerns to rest this year. The software in question is LG UX 6.0 and it's running on top of Android 7.1.2 and it's kind of been a mixed bag for me. So I've used other devices like the U11 that perform super fast practically all the time, the Google Pixel 2. The LG is a different story here and there. When I try to modify apps in the floating bar, it literally takes forever and I feel like I have to click it again because maybe I didn't click it the first time. Sometimes I try to quick launch the camera and it lags like crazy before I can take a picture. That kind of stuff worries me but hopefully LG can fix this because I actually do enjoy using the software aside from those minor issues I get. It's extremely customizable and things like the floating bar which grant easy access to apps and shortcuts, the ability to add extra navigation keys, or the option to add up to seven icons on the home screen dock really make this experience easier and intuitive for me so I enjoy it. LG does offer the double tap to wake and double tap to sleep feature, which I wish every phone had. You also have the always on display, which is similar to the ones on the other phones with the minor differences here and there, but it works just as well. Combine that with a powerful Snapdragon 835, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage. And we have a phone that pretty much handles anything. Apps open just fine, games open smoothly and run really good too. The only issue I really have is some minor software issues that I mentioned earlier, but the performance is there. LG does seem committed to offer Android Oreo for its LG G6 and the V30. Now I don't know how they're going to do with future updates, but at least I've heard that they are testing Oreo on the LG G6. 
Overall, I'm not crazy about the software, but it doesn't get in my way as much as it used to, so I really enjoy using it. It adds extra features to the stock version of Android, and I like that. Now here's a question for you. What do you get when you put together all those previously mentioned features plus the world's best smartphone camera? Not the LG V30. Now, hold on, before you go crazy and start smashing that keyboard, let me explain. But first, let's go over the specs. The rear camera setup is one 16 megapixel sensor with an f1.6 aperture. And yes, technically that is the largest on a smartphone. This sensor also uses OIS and EIS. The second sensor is a 120 degree wide angle lens with an aperture of 1.9. So the specs are definitely there and pictures that I took during the day look amazing. Where I was a little concerned is low light photos. That's where I'm not really too convinced. Sometimes the colors would get really dull to the point where the picture turned out kind of gray. I took a few pictures side by side with the Google Pixel 2 and the V30. Sometimes I preferred the V30, sometimes it was the Pixel 2, but I did find that I would have to retake pictures on the V30 more often than not, while the Google Pixel 2 would get it right the first time. Also, there's a bit of a lag when taking pictures on the V30, which is odd, and it makes some pictures look out of focus sometimes. So for sure it's a great camera, and I just hope LG can push a software update to fix those minor lag issues on the camera, but other than that, it's an amazing camera. The one camera that did disappoint me is the one on the front. Five megapixels. Five megapixels for a front-facing camera, it's just not good. In well -lit scenarios, it's good enough, but dimmer situations, it just doesn't compare to the competition, making these photos look like they were taken with a phone from like a few years ago. That wide-angle lens, though, that is a good reason to pick up the LG V30 or even the LG G6. It's really cool, and it can give you images that are more dramatic. I really, really like using it. Another area I think LG nailed it with is in the video. The quality of the video is great with plenty of detail and dynamic range, but the number of features and controls you get with the Cine Video mode continues to be LG's strong suit. LG talked a lot about how they focused on videography and it really shows. You can easily get some dramatic videos with the LG V30, and for those of you that are into filmmaking, you're going to appreciate all the features that are built into this thing. I think the V30 is very good at making dramatic images, so if you want something that stands out, I think the V30 is a great option for you. I mean, seriously, look at all these different modes and features. One of my favorite has to be point zoom, which makes it really easy to just pick a subject, zoom in without having to move around or make the video look shaky. You simply click, slide, and it zooms in. Let the phone take care of the rest. Something that I found pretty interesting that some of you guys may not know about is that there is a microphone inside the earpiece, and this will help for noisy environments. So that, that way you can remove background noise and get crisper audio. I haven't tested it out yet, but I definitely want to because, I mean, it sounds pretty cool. If you ask me, I think the cameras are pretty darn good. Now, I don't go shooting in the middle of the dark or taking pictures in the middle of the dark, so I personally don't have a problem with the low light being a little iffy, but the amazing shots I get during the day, I mean, I couldn't ask for more, at least not right now. So the LG V30 gets a thumbs up for sure, and I hope they continue to add the wide angle lens to future devices, one of my favorites. Now, for those of you that wanna go through a whole day without having to charge, you'll be happy to know that the LG V30 would almost get me through every day without having to charge. There was some days where I would have to plug it in, but I was overusing the phone and I tend to do that sometimes. The battery here is a 3,300 milliamp battery and even when I had to charge it, it wasn't too bad because of course we have Quick Charge 3.0 and wireless charging. Now get this, LG actually gives you a wireless charger in the box because you are paying $800 for a smartphone. So yeah, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. My days would normally end with about five to six hours of screen on time, and that's pretty much on par to what I was getting with the Galaxy Note 8. I did notice that V30 would last me just a little bit longer, so if you ask me, I do think the battery on the V30 is gonna last you a little bit longer than on the Note 8, but you do get a little more features with the Note 8, right? So is it the battery king that we all want? Not necessarily, but it does just fine considering the resolution and the size of the display. You can even downscale the resolution to save some more battery, so that's pretty cool. I definitely think the battery is good enough for me. So the V30 has a lot to offer and there's plenty of other things that make this a compelling purchase like the free Daydream VR LG is offering for a limited time, the Hi-Fi quad deck for your headphones and if you're a Sprint customer, the 128 gigabytes of storage with B&O headphones. But like every other phone, it does have a few flaws and for me personally, I think the good outweighs the bad in this situation and LG really nailed a lot of the good things that I like for in a smartphone. So. For me, it's good and I definitely plan on keeping this for a good time. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys for watching.
Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and I'll catch you guys when I unbox my iPhone 10. Peace.